of uh, City World Radio in downtown. And for without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce my very, very special guest tonight. And she's here from uh, Europe. She's Spain, from Spain, where she performs, writes music, and does all kinds of great stuff over there. She's originally from Vancouver. We're going to go over all of that. Anyway, say hi to Nancy. Nancy Ruth, live here in New York. Sí, buena. <laughs> Buenas noches. Buenas uh, noches, Nueva yes. York. <laughs> hey, <laughs> yeah, hey, everybody. Yeah. Wow. It's really cool to be here. Hey, Frankie. Yeah, how you doing? Yeah, good. But I'm so glad you're here. And we're going to talk about your career and, you know, what you've been doing and where you're from and all that stuff. So I'll ask you some questions and you don't have to answer them if you don't want to. <laughs> but you, you can if you wish. First of all, you are Nancy Ruth. That's your real name? Okay. Yeah, it's my real name. So, Nancy, you live presently in Spain. Yeah, I live in Malaga, in the south coast of Spain. It's a. It, I live actually outside of Malaga in a very small, typical Spanish town. Really, okay. really not much going on there. But I, I chose that place as kind of a creative refuge, you know. Uh -huh. And um, many, I think, fifteen years ago, and I've been going back ever since, you know. And then I finally just stayed. It's, it's a, it's a great home base, you know, just yeah. for uh, like as a creative place, just to go write and. And put my projects together, and then I take them on the road from there. So I don't oh. actually really work there, but okay. it's, it's a great home base. You know, That's I can have my so studio on the beach. And you know. nice, boy. <laughs> who, who lives better than you? Yeah, yeah. Oh man. So um, say again that the the, the 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 admiration I have for people that can write songs goes back to me uh, liking uh, you know um, all the great writers of the of the past. You know the. Uh, uh, the writers that wrote for Sinatra and all of those people that can take something from nothing and put it together. And I think that's really, I think that's really a great talent. So I'm enamored of what you can do. I, I, don't, I can't make a song. I don't know how to do that. I know how to back it up. It helps to create the right environment, you know. I mean, it's you. I really kind of uh, nestle away and, and just kind of let things come to me. It's, 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 it's often a... A process where you sit at the piano and you chase an idea and then an, a lyric will come and then you'll sort of work on that. So it's, it's a real combination between skill and, and uh, persistence and intuition and just kind of letting it come to you, you know, all of those elements. And right. I think one of the things that I love about living on the, in the south of Spain where I live is that I have very few distractions there. So I can kind of let, you know, yeah, I can, right. can kind of just like... Uh, let the cosmos... Uh, yeah, lose. you know, peel some artichokes and uh, eat some <laughs> olives and then, oh, there it is. There's the line that I was looking for, you know. Yeah. Run to the piano, finish it, record it, and, you know, it, yeah. it just, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an organic process. So wh when is your best time, do you think, when you write? When is morning, night? Morning, yeah. Morning, morning, oh, yeah, morning. morning. yeah, in the morning. I'm really relaxed, and, and I'm, my head is clear, and, and uh, yeah, the morning, I, I love it. So not like you really need, like, six cups of coffee to get going, right? Just one. In the morning is when you like to do this stuff. Yeah, well, I like together. to start in the morning, and then if I'm on to a good idea, you know, I'll I'll just stay in all day until, uh, yeah, it's uh, you get kind of obsessed with, you know, when you're creating an idea and you want to follow it through. It's like putting a puzzle together and chasing it down and pinning it down until it's done, you know? I hear you. It's exciting. Yeah. It's very exciting. She gets excited when she talks about this stuff. <laughs> you got to see her face. This is not TV, but it's she has a beautiful face, and she's very expressive. Anyway, so Muy bonita. Yeah, but <laughs> bonita, see. So um we have um um and you don't have any distractions as you said. And I think you mentioned to me the other day that you don't even have a TV. I've never had a TV. That's yeah, like me, I grew, I grew up without TV. I still don't have a TV and 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 now I'm I'm here staying in a hotel and so I have a TV and it's like Wow, there's like so they keep saying the same thing over and over and over again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. like brainwashing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's amazing. Right, it's all the same, right? I, it's yeah. all the same, and yeah. they only talk about one thing. It's so I I don't really miss having a TV. It's, Good. It's, it's <laughs> slightly, so me, mildly entertaining for about five minutes, but right. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go back a little bit. You were um, where are you from originally? You I grew up in in Sydney, British Columbia. It's a small town on Vancouver Island. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I grew up there in a, in a log house that my dad built. Wow. And. Uh, uh, didn't have many distractions there either. No neighbors, you know. So I think I, I grew up in you that grew kind up of with environment. That atmosphere. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I used to have a Tarzan swing and you know go out in the woods and talk to the bugs and the bees and uh -huh. and so uh, yeah, I love nature and that's space. great. I love having space. You know, I mean, you have brothers and sisters. I have one brother. Yeah, have yeah a brother, he's, he's yeah. a mountain climber. Yeah, he's a mountain climber in Banff National Park. Yeah, that wow, area, that's yeah. great. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. That's interesting <laughs> stuff. Is he musically inclined? Oh, uh, he, well, he, you know, we all played the drums in my house, actually. Funny enough, really? my dad was a drummer. And so we had a living room with a drum kit. And, and my poor mother, you know, can, it, can you imagine? My dad played. My brother and I would compete to see if we could play, you know. Yeah. And so three drummers in the house, and my mom just had a headache. So. Oh, my God. Oh <laughs> I mean, my none God. of us were any good, actually, but, you know. That's yeah. funny. I get you to play <laughs> drums tomorrow night? Nah, no, 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 no. No, 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 you don't want to do that. <laughs> So and so, you've been living in Spain how long now? Fifteen years, based well, yeah. there. I mean, I still go back to Canada, and and I'm on the road most of the time. You know, so You're doing yeah. shows. Do you book doing yourself, shows. or do you have somebody? Book? Um, I book a lot of stuff myself. I yeah. have an assistant, a booking assistant, and uh, they help out. and And I work with agents sometimes as well. You know, depending on on the gig or the circuit. So. Yeah, right now. I mean, I'm just really focused on my original band. The uh, it's all my own music, and uh, I put a band together in in Malaga, Spain. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, we kind of launched this new live show last year, and now we're we're taking it on the road. We're going to Latin America, going to Australia, <laughs> which That's is like great. a huge, a lot of work putting that tour together. But it's yeah. coming together. It's exciting. Yeah. Why don't we listen to one of her one of her cuts, <laughs> Nancy? Which one would you like us to play? Uh, have a listen to um, Buleria. Number one, it's called. It starts with a B, Buleria. Can you see it there? All right, yeah. let's don't sit let, back. Don't let the intro fool you. Okay. Yeah, always say. <laughs> <laughs> let's sit back and listen, folks, to Nancy Ruth. Early in the morning, when I find Myself alone I remember what you told me In your brazen baritone And I can't believe you said that And I hope it isn't true So I wrote this bulletia For you was great we have to um tell people where you you um where people can buy your stuff nancyruth.com yeah just go to the website it's on itunes and spotify and it's everywhere digitally yeah but if if you go to nancyruth.com then you can find all the links there everything is there yeah yeah Yeah. we became friends on facebook so i (laughs) saw your pictures and stuff so great good stuff really good stuff so you 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 started you were from, from from Vancouver, where we found out that you and and my friend uh, Rick Kilburn are friends. Yeah, he did your first album. Yeah, he did. Which is so strange because Rick was in New York back in the seventies, and uh, we were working in a trio together. 
Don Rebick, him and myself, oh. and uh, and he was just exquisite. What a great guy! Yeah, great, great um, uh, disposition. A really sweet man, and plays his tail off. Yeah, yeah. And he was with um, uh, he was with uh, uh, Mose Allison for a long time. Yeah, yeah. He's a good player. Yeah, good player. And he had his own. Uh, you know, he's at a studio which. Now he he's on cruise ships now, right? You yeah. Said. Hey. Yeah, I haven't seen Rick for a while, but we worked a lot together in the late 90s, uh, yeah. 98, and yeah, 2004, we did another album, jazz album, uh-huh. uh, which he played on. And um, so, yeah, Rick Rick was great to work with. Uh, I learned a lot from Rick. Rick is really a generous guy, you know. Very with, good uh, teacher. Yeah, he's he's really patient, mm-hmm. and uh, I had a lot of fun working with Rick, yeah. yeah it was well, a long time ago. Well, I was in Vancouver because that's where the uh, crew started from for, for the Alaska right. voyage. Yeah. And um, he took me to a, a dim sim place over there oh, yeah? in Vancouver. You probably know it. I don't know if I, if I would know how to, I wouldn't know how to get there. Yeah. But, but, he was, but speaking of his generosity, I mean, he was always great with, with me with pointers on what bass players like to hear from mm-hmm. drummer mm-hmm. and i also have that from from pat o'leary now who's we work together all the time mm-hmm. at arturo's but one of the things that he said that pat agrees with for a bass player is not to play a two and four and i at it just interferes with what he wants to do creatively mm-hmm. and i never really gave it much thought mm-hmm. but i can understand how restrictive it is to hear the, the symbol go every two and four you know, every second and fourth beat of the measure, which, you know, I never thought it would drive people crazy. So, But now I don't hardly play the high. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, because my foot gets tired, number one, and yeah. the symbols I'm using in the place okay. are not conducive to play easily. Yeah. I have to bring my own in, and I just don't want to do that. So yeah, yeah. I'm lazy that way. Anyway, but Rick was a really, really special guy, and he's just a... Uh, I'm glad he's doing it. I hope he's doing what he likes. If you doing a cruise ship, you know. Yeah, well, I think you know Rick's Rick's done, done a lot of producing, and um, yeah. I think he's probably enjoying playing his bass too. You know, because yeah, yeah, I mean, when yeah. you're in the studio all the time, you don't get a chance to really just play. You know, right? So yeah. I, I'm sure he's enjoying that. Yeah. And he showed me when I was at his home a picture of uh, him that Tony Bennett did. Oh yeah. Tony Bennett did a sketch of him. Oh no kidding! Which I thought it was cool. Oh, yeah, he oh, has cool. that in his, his apartment. Awesome. So anyway, so let's talk about. What's coming up for you so we can promote it? Wow. Well, I have three concerts coming up in Spain, in Malaga on the 22nd of September, and then 26th of September, we're in Madrid Mm -hmm. at Clamores Jazz Club, a fantastic jazz club where lots of great people play. So we're looking forward to playing our show in uh, Madrid, and then we are doing a show in Seville. Sevilla on October the 7th. So I guess if you're in Spain. Well, there's uh, a lot of people know, listen to our know. show that are from Spain. Yeah, yeah. We have a lot of people really? in Spain. Yeah. Bueno, estamos en España, Sevilla, Málaga, Madrid, vamos. Yeah, there you go. Sí, sí. So why don't you announce it in Spanish? Yeah. <laughs> pues, fantástico. Vamos a tocar temas míos con mi banda fantástico que tengo al bajo. Juan Soto de Málaga, Juan Heredia a la batería. Manolo Olmo a la flauta y el saxo y Rubén Portillo a la guitarra flamenca y yo al piano y guitarra y, y cantando temas míos so yeah so that's my band in Spanish and that's uh, great. they're all from yeah. Malaga and uh, and uh, it's really fun to play with them you know because yeah, uh, ex- excelente <laughs> excelente yeah, yeah excelente. <laughs> so tell me how did you hook up when you first went there when you first would you know arrive there you really didn't w- w- first of all let me ask you this question why did you go to spain in the first I place i first went to spain 15 years ago to just have some time by myself to write mm-hmm. and i love flamenco and i wanted to study the flamenco guitar and so flamenco uh-huh. has become a really important influence in my writing both harmonically and and rhythmically and just the whole vibe of it so mm-hmm. you know my my uh, culture musical culture is more uh, jazz and rock and you know yeah. uh, north american music so so um i've always written and uh and then i went to you know the the, the flamenco influence really started to seep into my yeah. into my writing so i needed to find musicians that understood how to play that music you know better place understood to go the, the phrasing <laughs> and, and how to how to close a phrase and because yeah. uh, i work with a lot of flamenco rhythms you know bulerias and tangos uh, uh-huh. flamencos and and so um i first 
the first time I recorded in Spain was actually in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. So I went looking for players there. I found a great guitar player named uh, Luis Rubisco. And um, and so and Paquito uh, Escurero was my percussionist, and, mm -hmm. and we went on the road a lot. We toured like constantly for a couple mm -hmm. of years um, with my stuff, and and also we did some so shows, you know, big shows, and then uh, and then I really missed Malaga for the lifestyle, you know, because mm -hmm. Barcelona is a big city, and I and I love the big city, but but I love the fact that in in outside of Malaga, I can actually live. Looking yeah. out at the Mediterranean, you know, oh and, it was like, uh, and, and it's not that expensive, you How know, it's like a, an affordable place for a musician to live. So I moved back there. I built a little studio on the beach and um, and then I, I went looking for a, a local band in, in Malaga to, to write the to uh, record the next album. Uh -huh. so, so I found a, a producer named uh, Juan Soto who's a bass player as well, and I, I took home um, this last tune that we actually just heard. I, I, I had written it, and I said, you know, I would love to hear how you play this and, and how some of the guys around mm -hmm. here would, would play this stuff. So he called uh, Juanito uh, Heredia, who is uh, quite a famous uh, percussionist in Spain, plays with a group con called uh, Chambao, which is, you know, he's always touring with those guys. So so anyway, they, they had a look at what I was doing, and they said, wow, this is cool, you know, this is really yeah. cool. And, so, like, and they, well, bring some more stuff, you know. So I just started bringing things to the studio studio and we just started putting them together and and before we knew it we we had an album after a couple of years but it was like a very yeah. organic process it wasn't me like you know hiring some yeah. guys hiring yeah. a studio it was like uh let's play it sort of came you know? to you it's, it's right like, let's play you know? people came to you right i mean yeah, you went to see came, people yeah, yeah. and you got to talking to people and we came to you, you know? yeah yeah that's a great way to put it together it was just brilliant and it was just so much fun you know that's so i, I think the fun is reflected in the music too you know? oh yeah it's, i can it's, tell it's, there's a it lot definitely. of it's very rhythmic it's 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 happy it's most beautiful stuff passionate but you know fun so you are listening yeah. to nancy ruth here live in the studio in new york city at city world radio and um, so i'm so happy to have nancy here because her her music is lively this is no when you listen to any kind of latin spanish kind of music you're tapping your foot and you're alive you know i always make mention of the the uh the the jazz uh latin club that was in the city on 86th Street when I was once younger, and 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 we'd go see Tito Puente, we'd see, you know, Paquito de River, we'd see everybody there. Everybody mm -hmm. played there, and it was right in the middle of Germantown, which, you know, you can't ask for a more stoic place to have <laughs> to have live music. But they did it, and it was great. And we used to go there all the time, and it was just great fun to uh, to uh, you know to go see those bands play, you know. And I'm so the best thing about what we do is being happy while we're doing it. Mm -hmm. And you obviously are happy what you're doing. It's reflected in your music, and it's reflected in your face. I mean, you're just a very happy person. It's nice to be around that kind of energy instead of people that are depressing, you know? This is good. <laughs> you, you attract what you are, you know? I'm happy to be here, too, in New yeah. York, because, yeah, you, you know, do. living in a small town, I, I love that. But I need the contrast, you know, of coming to a big city. And, well, I'm gonna and I talk, love being here. It's I'm going to talk you into six and six. <laughs> six six oh, that months would be there awesome. and yeah. six months here. That would be cool. And that six cool. months there to create and put it together yeah. and six months here to play it. Yeah, that would be cool. Wouldn't that be yeah. great? That'd See? be cool, yeah, yeah. We want to work on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's play another cut, shall we? How about um, Jasmine Tree? Fragrant the Jasmine Tree Sweetly said to sing me you saw how I cried to the rain And you said, there you go again There you go again You haven't learned a thing
great. So let's talk about your musicians that you use again. So you have uh, what's the, what's the combination? You have a percussionist. Yeah. So um, there are five of us that that tour together or that play okay. that play concerts. I mean, we sometimes would like to have a budget for the whole horn section, but um, the the core of the group is uh, myself on piano and uh, voice, and I'm the composer of the group, and uh, play second guitar sometimes. Um, Juan Soto, who's my uh, collaborator, my main collaborator in the studio. He's uh, yeah. my co-producer and uh, bass player. Okay. He's from Malaga. He's a really interesting bass player. We we went to Australia last year and, and toured, and everybody was like really curious about how he was playing because he has a very unique kind of oh, really? way of articulating. And so uh, so he's he's great to work with. Uh, Juan Heredia, who's uh, like really well known as well in Spain. In Spain, so they're, yeah. They're just like he was actually one of the first guys to play the cajon. You know, in flamenco, because oh, yeah, the cajon yeah. is actually an instrument that came from Peru, and uh -huh. uh, Paco de, de Lucia brought it over to uh, Spain in the seventies. And then, you know, the, these guys they they invented that yeah. cajon playing, you know, for for yeah. flamenco. It's it's a recent thing, you know, in the last last thirty forty years. So, um, so he's one of the pioneers of the cajon. Uh, Manuel Olmo, who is a flute sax player and also plays the electric guitar in the band for a few wow. numbers. He just, he's just like the greatest guy to work with. He, you know, he's, he's really, these uh, guys are versatile. They play more than one instrument. Oh, uh, yeah. They, and, you know, and, and Ruben, uh, Portillo, who's, who's playing guitar with us right now, mm -hmm. uh, on flamenco guitar. Also, Luis Robisco, who you heard on the, on the recording, plays with me as well sometimes. So mm -hmm. it depends on who's available. But, um, like so five, yeah. Five, six pieces. Yeah, well, five for sure, and yeah. then uh, sometimes you know if we have uh, you know another um, like a trumpet would be great uh -huh, on yeah. some gigs. Yeah, we play with a Cuban trumpet player in uh, in Australia when we tour there, named uh, Lazaro. Um, but um, yeah, so so these guys are are my brothers, you know, and and for me, there's there's nothing more gratifying than creating something and then bringing it to life with with guys that you have a lot of uh, respect. And they believe in, in you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, you know, yeah. Stepko Gut. Step Goods, a trumpet player, lives in, lives in Sicily. He's a great trumpet player, but he's from Austria. Or he's, or I'm hope I got that right, Stepko. Either okay. from Austria or Croatia. He's a great, great trumpet player. Cool. Great. Yeah, he's a wonderful guy. But you know, but that's uh, Palermo. I mean, Sicily is kind of far from where you are. So, but you never know. You yeah, know, no, you never in know, this yeah. in this business, you run into somebody who knows. You know. Yeah, yeah. You know, who knows somebody. You know. Yeah. And that's always the way it is when yeah. you're networking, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's great stuff. Yeah. I'm so happy. This yeah. happy music. You know, ladies and gentlemen, buy her album. She's got happy stuff going on. Oh, there. yeah, we should say what it's called. Yeah, what's Sangria the name of Sangria Jam. <laughs> that's <laughs> I don't know. great. I don't know what. People ask me what kind of music this is. You don't is. like I the really, music, you can I drink really it. Don't know. I mean, I don't know what to call it. You know, I don't know what to call the style. We, you know. Sometimes playing jazz clubs or or sometimes it's your in style. The, you know it's it's I it's hard to s really define what the style is. Yeah. I guess. I, what would you call it? I just call it gr happy music. You know, just yeah. really you know Latin happy music. Yeah, this yeah. Stuff is this stuff is contagious. It's not you know it's not like listening to. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't want to disparage Barry Manilow, but you know, but it's but it's not like listening to you know the more of a love song kind of thing. This mm -hmm. is. The real deal. You're, you're playing the real happy music of Spain, mm -hmm. and that's really important because yeah. you're perpetuating that wonderful sound that that I remember as a kid growing up. Because I listened to let me just quick sidebar. When I was a kid, I worked work with my father, who ran a uh, in the market, which is not here anymore, but who ran a prepacking house where we took garlic and onions and packed them in different things and sold them to stores and all of the women that worked there were all spanish yeah. all spanish and i got turned on to tito puente i got turned on to uh, uh johnny pachenka all those guys because these women just my father put a radio in there for them and they would dance while they were working i mean it was just an amazing thing cool. and so i got turned into all this kind of music you know and it was all happy music it was all great stuff and I loved it. I just loved it. And then, then I, when I finally later on lived in the, early in my youth, I went to those places in the city where SOBs two years ago. Mm -hmm. But you know, but but this place on, uh, I know the name. I can't remember the name of it. Oh, let's see, uh, Mike Sergio, if you're out there, text me the name of that club on 86th Street. Mike's a great, good friend of mine. He got me. He got me with when I couldn't remember Bradley's. You know, so it was it was good stuff. But um, I just love 
what you do. I love the energy that you put into it, and I love the fact that uh, when I woke up here, what happened? I, I, they put the lights on, folks. We were sitting here, you know, in the dark, which is that's kind of, <laughs> I like the mood better in the dark. Anyway, but the bottom line is is that um, you know I I just um, I, I love music. Number one, that's the first thing, and mm-hmm. and I play as much as I can, which is what I'm doing. And so you know, so when I run across somebody like you with that kind of energy level and your kind of devotion to what you're doing, it's so wonderful to be in your presence around that stuff. You know, because you. It's, it's inspiring, you know, and uh, when you're when you're playing the kind of stuff you're playing, that is why you got the the best people that you could find because they were all attracted to what your core of what you're doing. And I believe that, you know, and it's going to go on for you. Just got to do six months here. And yeah, six months yeah, here. yeah. Wouldn't and that be wouldn't that be great? No, no. Oh, you know, geez. it is it is really important, I think, for artists to keep their eye on what moves them. Because I mean, I'm one of those people that does most of the management, most of the business for the group. So yeah. you can really get bogged down with just like you spend a lot of time, you know, on, on your computer just doing arrangements and and, and travel arrangements right. and and social media. Well, and, you see this, and so you really have have to be fear you know what this is something that rick kilburn told me a long time ago and i and it stuck with me he said you have to be fierce about your time you know you have to be fierce about your time and really make sure that you you know make that creative time available for yourself because it's everybody will take it away from you if they can see this is the this was this issue that we're talking about was the problem way back when when i had um i've been exposed to studio guys years ago and i was admiring the fact that they the creative sense for them didn't want them to be bothered with the financial aspect of yeah. what, what you're doing because it takes away from their creativity. Yeah. And, I, and I learned from John Trope, who was a great friend of mine, that he was able to combine the business and the creativity. Mm. That's what you're doing. That's what I'm doing. It's hard. I'm not saying it's easy. No, no, but, it's very hard. But it's actually kind of why I'm still doing this after yeah. 30 years you know because uh 30 years you're not that old come no, on are you well, kidding i started me? when i was two so i yeah. thought so so i thought no, she did see you know, i thought she did right <laughs> you guys are her hair was sweet. never naturally curly till she started in this business <laughs> and then it became crazy yeah, my hair is always <laughs> that's how i, I love it i love it <laughs> now, what i always tell people you know i said learn as many aspects of the business as you can right. because at the end of the day it's nice to know what's going on too yep. and it's nice mm-hmm. to be able to write out your own arrangements and it's nice to be able to know that the club you know what the door split is or who's getting what and you know the more empowered you are the, the longer you last well you're yeah. it's right because you're you're, you're controlling your destiny yeah. literally and yeah. and what what a lot of people don't understand people that get managed or handled Somebody, I mean, the stories are endless. Yeah, they're Sammy endless, Davis's yeah. manager. Oh yeah, well, he a ripped them off. He, made, he, he ripped them off. He wound up broke. Yeah. You know, Sinatra had an album. You know what I mean? Yeah. These are people that have great talent, but don't didn't know how to. They didn't want to be bothered with that aspect of yeah. the business. You know, but the, the, the what you what you do in, in in controlling the whole thing, even though it's extremely tough. Yeah, it's very tough, and the rewards are greater because. You reap what you sow, and mm-hmm. you put this together, mm-hmm. and then you know what the money's going to be. You know the travel stuff is going to be. There's going to be no mistakes, mm-hmm. and then you're going to know where everybody has to go, yeah. and not take it from someone else. Yeah. You know, I, th- I think that's really. I, I admire that about mm-hmm. you. You know, I admire that about anybody that can do both: control your creativity and your future by creating, mm-hmm. uh, you know, your own management company. Yeah. And doing what you do, you know, yeah. it's hard to do. You know, I think the the greatest thing is if you're going to do all that is if you can do it for something that you really believe in and you love. You know, I, I, when it, when it, because I'm performing my own music, it sort of takes away uh, 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 the the difficulty the difficulty of the business side of it. It's, sure. it's so hard because the gratification is that much more. Sure, know? of course. So it's yeah, you know, it's it's a risky business, isn't it? <laughs> you know, yeah. Sure is. You risk everything you have to you know to go for your own car- yeah. artistic vision and hope that it works out. But yeah, but yeah see, so I, so I, my life is easier because I don't I don't aspire to become you know some great drummer in New York. I'm not. 
I'm a, I'm a good drummer that, that I can do this, what I do. And people like what I do, so I get hired. And, and I love what I'm doing, you know. And But I have no aspirations to have my own albums out or anything, nothing like that. I've got more aspirations around acting and around doing something around that cause I, because it's something I want to achieve. Mm-hmm. I've done some, but not, not enough. I want to yeah. do more, you know. Yeah, I'm you got star it. quality, I told you. I'm going to do what I know, yeah. <laughs> We're going to be successful together in different fields. Yeah. And then, yeah. then I'll go to Spain for six months, and you come I'm gonna here. I'm going to say, hey, I knew that Frankie guy when. You knew that Paul Dennett guy when you were way back when. <laughs> <laughs> well, we only hope that these great things can happen. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I just want to um, – the, the thing about our business, and I always remark about this, is that you're, this is the kind of business where old age doesn't mean anything. Because, you know, as long as you're playing – I mean, look at look at uh, you know uh, Jimmy Cobb. He's eighty years old, or maybe older. I don't even know. He's still playing, mm. and and all of these cats play, and they still play because you know why? They're doing what they love, and it keeps them young. Yeah. And and they they have stress, but it's not the kind of stress you could have when when you're doing something you don't like. That's right. Yeah. And that's key. I that's believe. Key. That's yeah, what that's I tell key. people every week on the show: find something that you love, folks. I don't care what it is, but do it because you'll find some peace and serenity in that mm-hmm. in that field mm-hmm. that you want to do you know yeah, yeah. cuz so many people so many great artists are working at the Ford plant you know i mean it's just it's just people that don't pursue what they want to do but it's hard you know because we have more and more distractions than ever now and and, yeah. and commitments and so that's what i said about being fierce about your time i think even if, if if you can only dedicate 10 minutes a day to what you really love then it's 15 then it's 20 then it's you know yeah. and then and then if you can start to make a living at it that's great but you know you can't pressure yourself either to to yeah. have to live for your passion you know i think that's an old phrase but but you know do a, do a little bit every day just as yeah. long as you can make enough to eat yeah you're there you're yeah. there yeah. and you know if you, you not having these um, incredible desires to have the big car and the house and all that stuff if as a musician mm. you don't quite think that way i mean as actually a, you know that is a very freeing thing that i learned very young was i've never been interested in in possessions you know i i, I have very i have a very small place that i live in and i have very few things and yeah. and and i've also left things behind many times you know because i moved around so much so uh-huh. if, if you can not be attached to stuff it's really helpful in this business you know I it free, s- frees you up a lot so it's absolutely correct i mean yeah. I, my apart well you my apartment we walk by but i have the only thing i have that's any value and it's not any value to anybody is all the drawings that my father did when he was alive mm-hmm. i have that that's all i have and my drums mm-hmm. and everything else is close and you know yeah. i have nothing else i don't want anything else yeah, yeah. i don't need the house or the car it's more all. living for the experience of life that's really so valuable you know it's enrich your life yeah. this enriches my life yeah. to meet people like you and to have them in my life and to share in their music and to help promote it mm-hmm. to me that's 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 what i love to do because mm-hmm. this way i have I, I i get great satisfaction out of my friends and out of the people that I that I uh, want to see successful, you know, mm-hmm. and it, it, that's that's to me that's more gratifying than having money. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we all need money to live. We all know that. That's tired old, you know. But sometimes, you know, you just want to you want to just be able to not have to worry about that stuff and just do what you love, and things will happen. That's my philosophy, folks. Take that to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play something. We'll play. We got time for hey, another tune. You know, if you have time, you could go out I think on. We on have a, time for one more. Yeah. If you want to go out on on a, a tune called Yorame, uh, it's, it starts with two L's. Yorame. Uh, that this song just got placed in a movie, so it might be kind of fun. Oh, to listen cool! To it. What movie it's, is that? It's called uh, La Ley del Embudo. It's a uh, it's a Spanish film, and uh, it's debuting this year. I just went to the uh, presentation, so. It's a slightly different vibe, this tune, but um, but Jorame means cry to me, and it's kind of a mystical song. We just did a, a music video in the desert in Morocco to this tune. Wow. This tune. So if you're on YouTube, uh, you can see Nancy Ruth music on YouTube, and you can see the video there. That's Fantastic. great. Yeah. Play it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Llorame, abrázame y llorame. You cry and lead my heart astray. You're stronger when you fall. You fall to my fatigue. 
fragility, a quiet dose of ecstasy that fades before the dawn, and then it's gone. Never stay. You take me to my end. We're searching for the same embrace, returning to a sacred place where love is love alone, beyond the stone. And then it's gone.